When iPads become broken or damaged, it's often easier for schools to simply throw them away. And that is how I came across these 11 iPads, who were given to me by a friend who works at a school. So yeah, they were being thrown out, and can I fix any of them, or do any of them work for that matter? Well, let's take a look. Here's a stack of 10 iPad Pros and a 9.7 inch iPad from 2017. They're pretty dirty, which is to be expected as they were used by students. My friend was told that they didn't work and he was wasting his time by pulling them out of the e-waste bin. But I'm a little more optimistic. Surely some of these are still usable, right? And this video wouldn't be possible without today's sponsor Raid Shadow Legends. The turn-based mobile battle MMORPG where you take control of champions and battle your way to glory in the realm of Teleria. Follow the rich story-driven campaign or try your luck in the arena against other players. My favourite champions include Whirlum Frost King, since it's getting hot here in Australia, and its freezing abilities would greatly reduce my power bill. Along with Calvalax, who may or may not be Shrek secretly hiding inside that armour. And I've never played a turn-based PvP battle game before, and I must say the graphics look great on this refurbished iPad I bought recently. And it can also be played on your phone as well as PC. Creating the best combination of champions is the key to success, and you've definitely got a lot to choose from. Also, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get exclusive rewards in Raid right now. There's also a brand new faction just released into the game, the Sylvan Watchers, with new champions such as Forest Elves, Ents, Druids and Fays, and if that's not enough, Raid's got a full lineup of events and a new season of the Forge Pass where you can get your hands on the most powerful gear the game has ever seen. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click the link in my description or the QR code on screen now. Do it. I dare you. And you'll receive unique bonuses plus the champion Tayrell worth $30, as well as 200k silver, 1 energy refill and 1 XP boost and an ancient shard. All this treasure will be waiting for you here, all for simply joining Raid Shadow Legends. And thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video and supporting content creators like myself. My first task is to fire all of them up and see what state they're currently in. And let's hope they aren't water damaged either, as apparently they were left out in the rain for some period of time as well. iPad number one is a 2017 10.5 inch iPad Pro, like most of the tablets I've got here. And sadly, it has been dropped, which has caused the glass to crack and the corner to buckle inward. Upon plugging it in, it seemed as if the battery required a while to charge. Quite some time later, it loaded to the setup screen. So far, so good. But after connecting it to Wi-Fi, I learned that it was iCloud locked, likely to the student who originally owned it. Yes, once the student finishes their schooling, they'll often have to hand the device back, but not all of them remove it from their iCloud account. The second device isn't in bad cosmetic condition. It is, however, quite filthy, and I doubt that the display has been wiped off in years. And since it likely hasn't been powered on in months, if not years, it took some time to fire up and I made sure to plug all the other devices in to save time. This one eventually loaded straight into recovery mode, and when connected to 3U tools, it wouldn't flash and wasn't able to detect the iPad's storage capacity. iTunes was also not able to recover this device. The error code suggests that the NAND flash storage has gone bad. What a shame. But what about the third iPad, which is once again a 10.5 inch iPad Pro. This one featuring white bezels and a black home button? It is possible that the student simply colored it in. That's what I would guess. And this one also boots directly into recovery mode. Not a good sign. Once again, I attempted to flash the iPad, reinstalling iOS. However, this once again failed and gave me error negative two, which signifies that the NAND flash memory has failed on this device as well. Out of the hundreds the school likely used, this could just happen to be the primary reason most of these failed. And number four is especially dirty on the back, and the display surface is very scratched up. It shows no signs of life, even after hours of charging up. It was being detected in some capacity by my computer, which was somewhat promising, but it looks like a case of failed flash memory once again. Even iTunes wasn't able to restore it, giving me error code 4013. And it looks like the backlight has died, as I could see the recovery screen on, but only when a bright light was shone directly at the display. Number five wasn't looking too bad cosmetically, just very dirty. 
very dirty, and plenty of gunk around the home button. And when powered up, it went straight into recovery mode. So I tried flashing the device and was hoping it wasn't going to have memory issues. But of course it sure did. Another memory failure. The next iPad was another filthy one, with its fair share of cracks and grime. It also exhibited the same problems, failing to restore in both iTunes and 3U tools. They say 7's a lucky number, but please don't let this iPad be broken as well. It's once again incredibly dirty, but not cracked. And powered on, and there's... Shrek? Yeah, Shrek found his way into this video. So I went ahead and wiped the device. Could this be our first working iPad? And here was the moment of truth, and sadly, it is iCloud locked. What a shame. Up next is the 8th iPad that didn't appear damaged, but looks can be deceiving. There are obvious signs of liquid damage to the display, but hopefully this one isn't iCloud locked. But once again, sadly, it was, making it basically useless. Here's one that's a little bit different, a smaller 9.7 inch iPad from 2017, sadly with its share of cracks on the glass. And at last, a device that isn't iCloud locked. It does have an MDM lock, however, that can be removed by request at the school and can still be used in the meantime. It must have stayed plugged in a heap as it only has 38 charge cycles. Oh, and surprisingly has 128 gigs of storage, which is nice. I didn't have high hopes for the next one, however, given the dents on the back. It's dirty, but not cracked at the very least. This was the first iPad to show no signs of life in any capacity. Rest in peace, Mr. iPad. And now for the last one, number 11. Another cracked one that has seen better days, but nothing was showing up on the display at all. But I was able to flash it, and I think it might not have an iCloud lock. And it's also got a super healthy battery. And while the display didn't appear to show signs of life, the digitizer was clearly working, and I was able to shut it down by swiping on the display surface. And for several months, I left these iPads and moved on to other projects. I put them all in an Esky with a moisture absorbing block, which may help some of the potentially water damaged ones inside. I realized I may be able to combine some of the iPads and create a working one, but this would require some tools I didn't own. So I purchased the iFixit iOpener toolkit with my own money, and after sitting for several months I got the iPads out of their container. But which devices do I believe I could combine? Well, that would be number 11 and 5. The body from 11 and the screen from number 5. I started by wiping down the display surface of number 11, which once again does have some cracks. Having a clean surface will make using the suction cup a little later a bit more viable. The next step was heating up the eye opener. I found 40 seconds in our 1000 watt microwave to create sufficient heat. It was then simply a matter of placing it on the bottom of the iPad and waiting about 2 minutes. This allows time for the adhesive strip around the screen to soften. I then used the provided suction cup to gently lift the panel slightly, enough room for me to slide in the plastic pick. This worked pretty well to separate the bottom off the display, and after heating up the bag for another 15 seconds I applied it to the side of the display. I must admit the cracks in the glass made this a bit challenging, but the side eventually lifted up with some patience. The top and opposite side also came off without much effort. The cracked corner sort of fell apart though, which I admit wasn't ideal, and with every side free, the panel could now be lifted up. I then removed a single screw and disconnected the battery with this little tool provided in the kit. The four display connector cables could now be detached. They're underneath this small protective cover. And finally, the broken display is free from the casing. Well, most of it is. The glass was already damaged and taking the screen out made it much worse. After some scraping, I was able to remove the glass and I applied some sticker remover to get rid of the remaining gunk on the edges. It was now time to salvage a working display from iPad number 5, which was stuck in a boot loop and wouldn't actually turn off funnily enough. So on went the heat bag, which I found pretty good so far and it easily softened the adhesive. The display on the other iPad was good practice so now I know exactly where the adhesive is and what to avoid. If your display is uncracked, it is so much easier, but you've still got to be careful. If it's not heated up sufficiently, you could break the glass. While this video isn't sponsored by iFixit, I found the tool they sell pretty useful. Luckily there are enough picks included as you don't want to let the adhesive stick back down and harden. And with every side detached, I was able to cut the remaining adhesive strips and lift off the display. Then it was a simple matter of removing the connectors from the main board. And with the screen and the new body, I reconnected the battery. The display still had adhesive strips mostly intact, so it connected to the casing quite securely. And look at this, there are signs of life. 
I went through the initial installation and it relievingly wasn't iCloud locked and the device actually worked. Well, how about that? It has no locks and is fully functional minus Touch ID, which I guess is paired to the home button in the original screen assembly. And to get the casing nice and clean, I used a healthy dose of eucalyptus oil. Around the lens had some hard to reach dirt and I used a bit of isopropyl alcohol to get in there and remove it. Well, how about that? I didn't think I'd be able to get any of them working, and the only other functional one is the 9.7 inch iPad, but that does have some cracks in the glass. I really learnt a lot and haven't previously taken apart any iPads. Perhaps I'll try working on some more in the future. So there we have it, a large lot of iPads that were being thrown out. And it is honestly pretty sad that once they become iCloud locked, they're pretty much just e-waste. But at least we got some of them to be functional. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.